Hey everybody, I'm Christina Aguilera and I am here in my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to talk about sex and politics. Now, I've never been one to be shy about my own views or beliefs, but in this election year, it's your views that count. I don't think it's realistic to assume that anyone will wait until marriage. I am opposed to abortion, just as I am opposed to murder. It's your body the White House is dealing with when it comes to sex education. Sex is great! Abortion. And domestic violence. There's some people out there that'll kill a pregnant person. And the only say you get is your vote. is what a lot of people think of when they think of sex. But what about this? You might not know it, but your sex life is tied up with the people in power. Half a billion of your tax dollars have already been spent telling teens that sex before marriage is bad, with condoms and contraception left out of the lesson. What kind of sex ed belongs in public school? Listen and decide. The silver ring thing is on the move, and they're bringing abstinence to America. These teens and 20-somethings have all pledged to hold off on getting it on until marriage. And they've got silver rings and hip-hop rhymes to prove it. Come and try on this silver ring thing and say I'm safe myself. I'm safe myself. Lock the key, you won't get it off of me. Yeah. They crossed the country with a high-tech road show featuring pro-virginity music, skits, and videos. Members like Jason believe that, just like the silver ring thing, public school sex ed classes should be teaching abstinence and nothing more. Whatever's being taught and the values that have been instilled isn't working. So we need to start doing differently. It's no secret that sex can be risky. Every year, one in four sexually active teens gets a sexually transmitted disease. And more than one in three young women gets pregnant before age 20, almost always by accident. Many abstinence advocates want schools to teach kids that premarital sex is always unsafe. We don't teach safety in carrying weapons. We don't teach safety in drinking and driving. We tell them, don't do it. Here's why. Of course, those activities are illegal. But the silver ring thing says all kids should view sex the same way. No sex until you're married. And no fooling around. Oh! So what does that mean for your dating life? What really is ruled out? You guys are a couple, so maybe mm -hmm. you two can speak about that. We'll kiss, we'll hang out, we'll, we'll hold hands, we'll hug and stuff. But we don't want to let it go any further than that. Uh, Touchy-feely over clothes, then is one step closer? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Dry humping? Yeah. Okay, okay. sorry. <laughs> no, that, that's, I mean, that's fine. Like, I mean, you start doing that, then all of a sudden it's real easy to, well, maybe you can take off your shirt, well, maybe you can do this, maybe right. you can do that. And we, so don't want, just... we don't want to take it there at all. But will this work in a country where 80% of the population has sex before marriage and over 60% do it before high school graduation? It's unrealistic to say kids are not having sex and if you say no, they won't have sex. It is absolutely fundamentally necessary to give kids information about contraception and about protection. Nicole wishes she'd been given a little more information before her first time. Do you remember having sex ed in school? A little bit. Um, it was basically focused on abstinence, though. We didn't really talk in depth about making choices or contraception, things like that. At 15, Nicole started dating her first boyfriend. He was two years older and more sexually experienced, and he began pressuring Nicole to have sex even though she wasn't ready. He said things, you know, like, we loved each other, and so that would make it a positive experience, you know, it would bring us closer. Sex talk was taboo at home, and she didn't feel comfortable talking with teachers or friends. So Nicole's only source of information was her boyfriend. He said, you know, we didn't even need to use a condom, and um, that I would be fine, and also that it felt better for him if we didn't well, use a condom. Of course. Right. <laughs> Every yeah. guy will say. <laughs> yeah. It turns out Nicole's boyfriend was wrong. Just a few months after losing her virginity, Nicole got pregnant. I was one month turned 16 when I had sex for the first time, and one month turned 17 when I gave birth. I just thought, this is not the life that I want. I wanted to go to college, and I wanted to have a career and do all those things right. that I wouldn't be able to do with a baby. Nicole decided to have the child and give him up for adoption which meant through junior year her closest companion was the baby she was carrying. I would talk to him sometimes and say, I'm really sorry about this whole situation. You know, I'm trying to take care of myself and I'm trying to do his best and, you know, I mean... That's very cool. That's very strong. Yeah, I mean, that's... It was... You know, I was alone. 
Many experts believe kids like Nicole need classroom instruction that covers all the issues tied to sexual health. It encompasses not just reproductive health, but, you know, communication skills, relationship building, self-esteem enhancement. But abstinence advocates say teaching contraception sends a mixed message. They're saying, on one hand, we don't want you to have sex, but if you do, then make sure you're safe. But that kind of message also says that we don't really expect you to be able to reach this goal. President Bush wants all kids to reach that goal. He's called for spending $268 million this year on school programs that promote virginity but never mention condoms. John Kerry, the Democratic presidential challenger, says it's not enough to tell kids premarital sex is bad. He supports programs known as Abstinence Plus, which include information about contraception. If you ask the researchers, most of them will tell you that while abstinence pledgers do delay having sex by 18 months, they're just as likely as non-pledgers to get STDs and less likely to use protection when they do have sex. And while it's proven that proper use of a latex condom gives you 10,000 times more protection against HIV than unprotected sex, many schools that teach abstinence only still use materials that tell kids things like, relying on condoms is like playing Russian roulette. Critics say these programs discourage condom use among kids who do have sex and that such education policies are based on religion and politics, not science. What would you say, Jason? Would you be okay with premarital sex if there was zero risk of STD and zero risk of pregnancy? I don't believe so, no, because the reason why I believe what I believe is because I do have a faith. I do have faith in God, and I believe that God created marriage, and I believe that marriage is and something... And it says this in the Bible. Yeah, and that's how it was, it was created to be that way. Is sex only for the purpose of making babies to you? No, no, no definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, yeah, uh, one of our segments in our show it talks about how sex is an awesome thing. Sex is great! Oh, and it is great in the context of marriage. Do you believe that there's a possibility that you could have a bad sex life? I mean, <laughs> could, could the sex be bad because it's something you've never tried? Or? Um, I'm. Uh, if, to if, the you see, if you see a donut and it looks good, I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. <laughs> no, really? Because I've had some rotten ones. You know? You never know. <laughs> well, <I laughs> got to test I, drive the car I, before you buy it, right? Well, yeah, actually... <laughs> I give the members of the Silver Ring thing props. There's no denying that staying sex-free is the only surefire way to avoid some serious consequences. And avoiding temptation isn't easy. If you agree with them, you'll probably line up with President Bush on this issue. But John Kerry and other supporters of comprehensive sex ed have a point too. They believe abstinence-only education doesn't offer answers to people like mature couples who decide they're ready for sex but not marriage, and gay people who can't get married in most states even if they want to, and people like Nicole. Is there anything that you wish you could have learned through school that might have helped prevent you from getting pregnant in the first place? I just, I really wish that somebody would have had an, an honest conversation and say, right. you know, you need to use a condom and that if you're going to engage in sex, what that will entail and what you need to be prepared for, as well as saying it's better to wait. When we come back, what happens when you do have sex and don't use protection? I knew, I just knew. And I said, I'm pregnant, I know I am.